that is for the basic scheme of a neural network. Now, how is it possible to understand mathematically the connections and the neurons that lie in this scheme? We have here x1 to xp that correspond to the different covariates. These different covariates are all linked to other neurons, z1, zm, that lie here in the hidden layer. That's the reason why we are going to represent, uh, we are going to, to, to provide equations corresponding to this representation. That means that we have zm, zm for m equals 1 up to capital M. Hmm? What is Zm? Zm is going to be a combination of the covariates. I put that in alpha M transposed times x. Hmm? That will be x, a vector of covariates. It corresponds to x1, x2, x3, xp. And it's multiplied by the row vector, which is also of uh, size p, hmm? which corresponds to, man, to, to the coefficients alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha m, that multiplies different x. Hmm? This is alpha 1 x1 plus al alpha m1 x1 plus alpha m2 x2 plus alpha m3 x3, and so on. This is what is inside this expression. To that, we add a constant term. It is usual in regression eh, to put intercepts. Here, this constant term is often named in neural networks a uh, bias. And next, we take a function sigma. Sigma is, in fact, what is named an activation function. This is a sigmoid. We are going to explain that in some minutes. This is the way we get zm from x. E each z is a combination of all the x, of all the covariates. Next, when we have zm, we can construct a vector. Huh? We can construct a vector z, z, that corresponds to a vector where you have z1, z2, z3, zm. You multiply that b by beta transposed. Beta, therefore, this is a vector as well, a vector of size capital M. And here we have a row vector. This is beta 1 z1 plus beta 2 z2 plus beta 3 zt plus beta m, capital M, zm. That is this expression. We add here as well a constant term, which is also named the bias. Hmm? And we have here uh, a combination of the differences, hmm? combination of the differences. And we add another function here. We add another function, g, hmm? g like this. We can name this t, hmm? and in this case we have a function g of t, hmm? and g of t, in fact, this is a function, a general function, g of t, is also a general function h theta of x. Hmm? In fact, you have t, Hmm? Let's say new variables that are constructed through z1, z2, z3, z capital M. This is t. You have a function g of t that takes the combination of all these uh, z. Hmm? Therefore, this corresponds to the, the... Here you have a combination. You have weights for the different z that corresponds to the connections here. You have a function of... Uh, the, the, the linear combination of the z's to provide something which has to be as close as possible to this y. This y is predicted in a way by my pink quantity here, h index theta of x. x, why do we have x in fact? x, we have a function of x because at the beginning we have x here, therefore z depends on x, z is here, we have g, a function g of z, of the linear combination of the z's, but it is also a function of the initial x. This is a function of the initial x. That's the reason why you have the vector x here, x1, xp. 
And what is this theta? This theta corresponds to the set of parameters that appears in the whole methodology. That means that theta, this is beta naught, beta, beta, which is a vector of coefficients of size uh, capital M. Next you have the scalar bias term alpha 0 1 for z1 this is alpha 0 1 alpha uh, 1 hmm? this is a vector huh? a vector of size uh, p hmm? that multiplies every Covariate the vector of every covariate, the, the, every covariate, the vector of covariates here. Alpha 0, 2, another bias term, alpha 2, and so on, up to alpha 0, capital M, alpha M. In this function, you have a large, a possible very large set of parameters. That's the principle of neural networks. You have a lot of parameters. For example, here it's possible that capital M is 20, 50, 100. It's possible. Hmm? And thus we have at the end a function that is supposed to um, predict, to correctly predict an output y. Hmm? Before the system he is going to uh, find estimates for the different quantities that appear in this vector theta. The system is going to learn from uh, an initial sample of data where you have covariates and uh, output. It's going to learn. Learning that means that it's going to, esti to find estimates for the different quantities here and therefore with that he's going to be able to predict y. Thus, this is uh, very similar. This methodology is very similar to a, a nonlinear uh, multiple regression technique. Hmm? In fact, it's also solved in this case through uh, least squares techniques. Hmm? We can define a least squares technique uh, using uh, these um, using these data. In fact, you have uh, a sum i equals 1 to capital N. Let's say we have N data and, and, uh, and observations. Hmm? We have, that means yi for capital N observations. We have h theta of xi, where we have to estimate theta, and we have a square here. Hmm? That is, in fact, r theta, r theta. This is the sum of squares. We have to minimize that with respect to theta. And we have something similar to the classical least squares estimators. In fact, this function is solved differently. We are going to see that in another video. Let's go back to sigma. Sigma, this is a sigmoid, this is what is named the activation function. And I'm going to uh, uh, give a representation of sigma. Hmm? Sigma, it is, let's take a, an axis like this, an axis like this. Hmm? Let's take this axis. Hmm? You have a zero here. You have sigma here, which is a function like this. Sigma is a function like this. Sigma, this is, uh, we, we can write a, um, a formula for it. Sigma of v, this is 1 divided 1 plus exponential of minus v. Hmm? Here you have, I can write as well, sigma of tv. Hmm? And here you have the case, let's say, where you have t equals 1. Hmm? This is exactly the function 1 divided by 1 plus exponential of minus v. 
you can have other uh, shapes. Hmm? You can have, for example, here, like this. These functions join each other at the end here. But this is for the case t equals 10. Hmm? And a third case, let's say, let's take this one. Let's take in, yes, in, in yellow, let's say, here. You have a very flat curve like this, more flat. Huh? This is still a sigmoid, but here you are in the case t equals Oh, let's say it's one half, a bit less than one half, let's say one fourth, one fourth, hmm? like this. Therefore, this, this flows a bit here. But anyway, we see how this activation function works. It is an activation function. The name is well chosen because uh, it corresponds to a function which is activated at zero. If you have a quantity, if you have v, which is larger than zero, you see that there is something that happens, especially in the case t equals 10 here. You see that this function, you see there is an activation. The function which was close to zero before zero hmm, is now close to one hmm, for wh when, when you have v, which is uh, larger than zero. The larger the t, the more you have, uh, I would say, uh, an important slope here. Hmm? The most uh, important, the activation effect is. Hmm? And if you have t which is small, which comes closer and closer to zero, what you have is a function that becomes more and more linear. That means that if you have a t which is close to zero, this sigma uh, seems to be like a linear function. This, these coefficients are uh, uh, classical coefficients that you find as well in multiple linear regression. And if this j, g function here just reproduce beta naught plus beta tz without modifying it, we are very close to a multiple uh, linear regression problem. And the last thing we can say uh, about this activation function is the fact that it's possible to shift it. Let's say here that we, uh, we add a, a v naught here, v naught, hmm? v naught here, hmm? If I defined sigma v as sigma of v minus v naught, the effect of this, the effect of defining v naught, is simply to shift all the graph, the whole graph here, uh, where the, the slope, where the event happens, close to this value v naught instead of zero. This initially, this activation function was simply an indicator. Hmm? You had a point v naught, hmm? and the, the, the function was 0 on the left of v naught, and was 1 on the right of v naught. Therefore, that was meaning that for a given threshold v naught, for a given threshold v naught, a neuron was activated. When you had this quantity, hmm, which was larger than something like v naught here, something like a threshold, when this quantity was larger than a threshold, hmm, that was meaning that z was activated. z was 1 and not 0. z was activated, the neuron was activated through the combination of the different neurons in the input layer. That's also a way to think about neural networks like uh, what happens uh, in, in, a, in the human brain. Hmm? 
But now, this uh, activation function has been generalized in a way it's not an indicator anymore, it's not a step function anymore, it's something like this, where you may have something that are, that are close to the step function, but also things that can be close to a linear function. And when you are in a regression problem, g here, this function g is, yes, it's nothing. This g of beta naught plus beta tz equals beta naught plus beta tz. Hmm? In this case, you see that you have here linear terms. Sigma seems to be like a linear term as well. And in this case, you have something which globally is fully linear. This function h theta of x seems like a linear function of the different covariates.